Hi there, and welcome back to another PSDK and Pokemon Studio and tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be going over how you can make custom evolution methods for your Pokemon so that you can make them evolve in fun and unique ways, like maybe they require a status condition to be triggered, or they require you to have an egg in your party, or a Pokemon to be fainted, or something unique. But you can also do things more, more advanced, like um, registering a hook that makes an evolution variable go up every time and then after this evolution variable hits a certain limit then that pokemon or that method would return true which would then make that evolution condition return true so we can do things very simple but we can also do things that are very advanced so there's a big range here i'm going to focus mostly on the simple things and then just show examples of the more advanced things because i'm pretty sure people who are doing advanced things kind of know what they're doing in the first place and just need like a little push or a nudge in the right direction so that's what we're doing the first thing that we need to do is check the PSDK code for some examples, or at least I'm going to show you how to, you could do that just because I think it's a good idea. So you should just need to open up a command prompt in your root folder. There there's, should be one provided and then just type code and dot, and it should open the folder that, you know, the, the right folder. Um, if it doesn't just open it yourself by going into file and then do open folder and then go into the Pokemon SDK folder that's in your projects folder and hit select folder. Then use this search function over here and then do evolve or elv underscore this is going to show you all of the custom methods that they already have defined so some of the examples given are like hitmonlee hitmonchan so basically you can make methods that just check properties of a pokemon or like certain things so this is just checking the attack of a pokemon and the defense of the pokemon and then returning if this is true or false you can do things that are slightly more advanced like checking if you have a certain Pokemon in your party. You could check to see if other actors in your party are of a certain type. You can make sure that the person is pressing down when the uh, end of a battle, when they level up or something happens. Um, you can make sure that they have a fairy type move. This should be for Sylveon. You can check things like the natures and then you can do the more advanced things like the evolution variable that I was talking about. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do file and new window. And we're gonna do file and we're gonna do open folder and now we're gonna select our project and then just hit our scripts folder and do select folder and then in here we're doing a new file this new file is just gonna be called 00100 but it could be any combination of five numbers and then I'm gonna name it custom evolutions rb and then we just need to access this same thing up here so we're gonna do module pfm class Pokemon and then like I said we can do something very simple like just checking if a Pokemon has a certain status so we could do def is poisoned and then just return is poisoned it's actually literally that simple so uh, is poisoned here is just another property of the Pokemon object you can actually check all of those properties by just hovering over Pokemon and then clicking on PFM Pokemon we full screen this you get a list here of a whole bunch of different things. Um, you could see burn. Um, you could see uh, if it's an egg, I think is, I know is something somewhere. You could check if there's a dead Pokemon on your team. Um, if it dislikes a certain flavor or likes a certain flavor. Um, you could do a whole bunch of different things. So this is just a list. You can even actually add new properties to the Pokemon object and then check those conditions uh, if you wanted to, but Going into that is a really just a separate video basically. So then another example I would like to give is like has KO ally or yeah we'll just say ally um, and then this would just be something like return actors any I believe is what it was and then we are going to do Pokemon and then we are going to do is it alive? And then also is also just mm, not an egg. It's important that we're checking both of these things here. Um, and I just want to confirm that alive is actually one of these. Yeah, okay, it is perfect. So this is going to check to make sure that our that one of our teammates is KO'd, but also not an egg because an egg would always return or 
because an egg would also return an unalive. So this would return true if it's an egg, technically. So you need to also ensure that it's alive and not an egg. And then you may be wondering, how do we apply this to our game? How do we give a Pokemon these evolution conditions? So all you need to do is go into Studio and then go into your database, go to Pokemon, and then you just go into an evolution method here. And then you can change the first evolution method if you want. You can scroll all the way down and then do depending on a function. But instead, I like to do a Wombo combo. I feel like a level 22 with a dead ally and then evolves into an area dose is kind of like a fun little story. So we're going to do add a condition and then we're going to do depending on a function and then we're going to do has KO ally. So this right here just needs to be the same as this here. Oops. So then once we go to the side here, we can then save and then we're going to run this. And then you're just going to give me two seconds to get into the game. As you can see, I'm missing some dialogue here, but it's not really a big deal. Um, so what we need to do here is we need to make space for our spinner act. So I'm actually going to withdraw our area dose. I'm going to leave the egg in our party to ensure that this check is working properly. And then we are going to uh, give ourselves a spinner act. We're going to give it at level 21 because it should evolve at level 22. And then I'm going to give myself two rare candies so that we can do a good check here to ensure that everything is working. So the first check is going to be that it's not going to evolve, ideally. It, it shouldn't evolve, right? We're going to give one of these to the spinner rack. We're not going to learn the move because we don't really care. And as you see, it didn't evolve. Perfect. So we do need a KO'd Pokemon in our party for this to work though. So now we are going to have to do withdraw Pokemon at one, should get rid of the egg. And then I'm also going to have to do actors zero HP is zero. Okay. So now we have a KO'd party member and we also have a level 22. So we technically are at the right level. We have the KO'd party member. Um, and then we are going to use another rare candy. We're going to use it on Spinarak. And now it should evolve because we have that KO'd party member. Now, I'm thinking about it a little bit more. I guess you could use a rare candy on a KO'd Pokemon. So maybe you'd also want to make sure that the KO'd Mon is not also this Pokemon that you're giving it to. But, you know, that's just like another check that you could just do yourself. It's not, it's not really that difficult. So now you know how to give yourself a custom evolution method and how to actually code the custom evolution method. Um, as you can see, it's quite simple. So now that we showed how to do that, I'm going to show real quickly just an example of the ev evolution variable being increased. So really, you could always just check this by just searching up evolve var and then seeing some examples of when it goes up. So you can see here, uh, launcher increase evolve var if the move is a critical hit. So this looks like it's for farfetched. The documentation here says that it is. This is a critical hit counter for Galarian Farfetch'd evolution. So for every time you land a critical hit, you are going to see a increased evolve var for the launcher. This is also checking specifically to see if the launcher is a Farfetch. So it's not going to work for anybody else. You will have to add your own Pokemon there if you wanted to. There's also a check here um, because on death, if you land the critical hit is a little bit separate than just doing on damage. And then you also have a similar situation here for Primeape. So you could really do a post damage hook, but you can also do post damage death hooks. And I'm pretty sure there's some other uh, hooks here. So if we just right clicked it and then go to definition, you have like register damage prevention hook, register post damage hook, register post damage death, register pre drain, register drain prevention, and there's a, yeah, uh, it kind of looks like that's all of it, but you can always make some more yourself if you really wanted to. So all you really need to do is increase the evolve var, which is just another property of the uh, Pokemon object. So this is just another thing that you can call technically whenever 
doesn't have to be during a hook. Uh, this could be called actually in a script command technically. Um, so there's, there's tons of ways that you can do it. You just have to call this basically. Um, and you would just check to see if it hits a certain limit uh, like they do with Annihilate Peer and Surfetched. And then once this evolve var, if it's above this number, then it would return true, which would then make that evolution method return true for the condition. I hope I made this under understandable, like kind of easy to digest. Uh, I felt like this shouldn't be too complex and I'm just hoping I didn't overdo it. So um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.